the internet is used by nearly 4.66 billion people worldwide, including you and me. And thanks to the internet, you see this video right now. We have the internet everywhere and we use it for everything, so it's hard to imagine your life without it. It's in your pocket, isn't it? Also on the air, as well as on your phone line. But where did it come from exactly? Who gets the credit for creating the internet? How exactly does it work? Where is the internet? And how is the internet transmitted to get directly to your home? We'll find out in today's video. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and give it a thumbs up before we begin. The internet has turned humanity into good and bad. It's probably the best tool I've ever created. We use the internet for a lot of things in our world today. It allows us to share our lives on Facebook, order food weekly, check our bank accounts, watch movies on Netflix, send an email to a friend in another country, and search the internet for everything we want to know. Let's take a look at the origins of the internet. As you know for sure, the internet is not run by a single large corporation or a single server that powers everything online. It is a massive network of interconnected systems that connects all the individual computers and server devices in the world. Our communications and websites reside and travel more and more through it. As a result, it should come as no surprise that the internet was not created by a single person. Most internet access for home customers starts with a service provider, ISP. Some ISPs purchase their own services from even larger ISPs led by Tier 1 providers. With the help of submarine data cables, these massive networks can communicate with each other. They are the driving force behind the globalization of the internet. We can say that our life depends in some way on these submarine cables. It is a very important thing to know. Until then, let's go back to the past. To understand the early origins of the internet, we must first go back to a time when computers were not even developed. Some experts anticipated that one day we would have a global network of information that could be accessed quickly. Nikola Tesla, a well-known scientist, developed a global wireless system in the early 1900s, claiming that it could carry energy around the globe. He even set up a wireless station to carry messages between the United States and England, as well as to ships at sea. It took decades to develop the right combination of software, hardware, technology, and marketing. Since World War II, humans have been trying to get computers to communicate with each other. The current internet did not begin to take shape until the late 1960s. The very first prototype of the modern internet was developed by a military government agency known as the Advanced Research Projects Agency, or ARPA. A computer enthusiast named Joseph Licklider was instrumental in convincing ARPA to fund research into a computer network that would connect scientists and engineers across the country. ARPA began building the network in 1969 after a few colleges agreed to participate. It was known as ARPANET. It started fairly as a kind of messaging service between computers at UCLA, UC Santa Barbara, Stanford University, and the University of Utah. So, in 1989, a scientist named Tim Berners-Lee began working on a way to organize all of the information with the assistance of his colleague, Robert Caillou. Berners-Lee is credited with inventing the internet. This allows ordinary people like you and me to connect to the internet by inventing internet fundamentals such as web pages, hyperlinks, and internet browsers. Let us now return to those submarine cables to which everything in this world is connected. The modern internet is a vast network of interconnected points all over the world. So, how does the internet then connect us all together? Cables span across the entire oceans to connect countries. This isn't a new idea as we've been laying cables since 1854 when construction began on the first transatlantic telegram cable. The internet is a vast, sprawling network of networks that are linked together. In fact, the term internet is said to come from the phrase interconnected networks. Because computers communicate within networks, and these networks communicate with one another, one computer can communicate with another in a distant network thanks to the internet. For such an incredibly complex technology, the process is a surprisingly simple engineering effort. Each cable is made up of nothing more than optical fibers wrapped in protective materials. As of 2017, approximately 420 cables spanning over 1.1 million kilometers had been laid globally. 
Here's how it works. A ship pulls a cable from one country to another, and then the cable is laid on the seafloor via sea plow and digging a small trench for the cables to fall into. Natural ocean currents eventually bury the cable. However, if the ground is uneven, the cables are not buried and are therefore vulnerable to damage from ship anchors, shark bites, and other natural disasters. One such disruption occurred in 2008 due to cable damage and approximately 60% of India's and 70% of Egypt's internet services were temporarily disrupted. Having said that, damaged cables are uncommon. Repairs to severed cables are ongoing all over the world. Following their journey across the sea, there are systems of cables that span your country and lead right up to your door. The internet is technically owned by no one and everyone. The internet is a self-contained interconnection of various voluntary networks. It is decentralized, which means that no single government or body owns or controls it. However, the government has the ability to control its citizens' access to the internet through laws that affect the nation's internet service providers. The internet has undeniably changed our lives for the better. It has infiltrated in so many aspects of our lives. It has enabled people to carry around the entire world's encyclopedia. Many people have used Google to answer the deepest question they have, but with massive information comes massive misinformation. Our lives have also been drastically altered by the use of social media. Of course, the internet has some negative aspects, but it also has its positive aspects. Overall, the internet is still expanding, and roughly half of the world's population has access to it. In less than 20 years, the internet has grown to connect approximately 230 different countries. Even the world's poorest developing countries are now linked. If you enjoyed this video, let us know what you think in the comments section below. Also, kindly subscribe to this channel and hit the like button. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.